Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Commentary for the 15th. You guys will hear me Thursday morning as Keith is traveling. We're going to try to find a couple trades that might be good for you to do over the holidays. And the following week for Thanksgiving, we're just, we'll have just a Monday class and that's it. We're then off to the races. You guys need to enjoy your week and, and have a good vacation. Today, I want to talk about pulling the trigger, which AKA can also be called placing or closing out a trade. And it's, it's rather interesting, and I'm going to have you guys go ahead and give me a couple thoughts here. But for the most part, when you're placing or closing out the trade, what have you always been taught by education? So what have you always been taught by education? And I'm going to kind of giggle because I know the answer already, but I want you to tell me. <laughs> I, I, I see three coming in already. 20% return. Just hit singles. Book a profit and get back in. So I, I've heard all, well, I've heard two of those three. Um, <laughs> uh, Bill says, I don't remember. I used my own methods. Say I closed early on one of the 40% returns in three weeks. So I find it interesting because basically, what education is teaching you to do is a repeatable process, right? They want you to learn a repeatable process. And I understand it, but here is my question. I'm going to put it with the chart because we want to make the chart here. I'm going to go to Costco. Uh, for some of us, I took profits up at 500. On Costco, we've made over 100% a couple times in a row. And Keith actually asked me today, hey, should I take my profits on Costco? Because he still has 450s. In fact, let me see if I can find where we're at on some of these. Um, I know I've got it in here. Yeah, let's go to the ones that I can show you. Let's go to the high group. So the high group, the high group only has 550 calls. Let's, uh, let me see if I can't find it in the Coda group, keep stuff. He's also gone to 550s. I wonder if he closed it out today. I'm going to put you on pause and see if we've got a closed out trade here. I can't show, I shouldn't be showing. Some of these, oh, I don't see it. Wonder if it's in my group. Wonder if it's in the no Parker group. Huh. Wonder if it's already transferred over to Schwab. Um, yes, yeah, so our process is repeatable. And that's where I'm going at with this, um, Jim, is to learn a repeatable process. And there are some things, so I should say, even though some methods will contradict each other. 
The problem with just going for singles or going for 20% return is if you did that on Costco, you went from 375 down here and probably got out at 400. But right now it's trading at 519. If you got out every $25, Commissions, 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 commissions. And there are times when it goes down or it goes sideways and you get out for a loss. If the chart is bullish and it's technically moving the direction that you want to go, right? Then if you get out at a 20% return or you get out you know, every two weeks, you just missed level one basic technical analysis, which is the first thing that you start out with every single time you start an education. Fundamental analysis, is the company fundamentally sound? Can it take a, a hit with uh, the economy, the GDP, a an election year, a recession year. And then the second thing they teach you is the trend is your friend, follow the chart. So I'm going to tell you really dumb to hit singles and get out to get back in the trade, to get out to get back in the trade, to get out, to create all these commissions or fees, to go down and take a loss, to get back in now at a higher price, the short answer is I would much rather let something run from 375 up to 519 and protect through earnings and protect through earnings and actually make something on the downward run. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is really coming down to Basic for me, right? When, ran, when you make your decision, can you stand by it whether it was right or wrong? There are times that I don't make it right. There are times, again, we're going to go back to, to Costco, right? It makes no sense. 325 to 400, get a 20% return, get back in again. 20% return, do commissions, get back in again. 20% return, take a loss, try to get back in again. Basic, basic. Following the trend up says you follow the trend up. You protected earnings so you can make up some of the downward movement. It is really that simple. Jim asked for the repeatable process. Yes, Jim, my repeatable process is mathematically or statistically, right? A stock can lose or gain in a four to six week period ten percent plus during the two weeks before earnings and the four weeks after i even have a date but I could try to make up some of the downward movements. Not only do I have a date, I've got a date in an hourly time that I can time these type of movements because we do it through earnings. Going back to make a decision, hey, should I put more stuff on, take some stuff off? It's extremely difficult. If I go back to some of our stuff here, 
we've got a first solar position that we've been in. What we spent $18 on is now worth 30. So if I do my math, take, uh, gonna take a calculator here, right? If I do my math, uh, $30.85 minus $18.45 leaves $12.40 divided by $18.45. We're looking at a 67% return. Not bad using an option strategy that acts like stock ownership. So if I was going to use this first solar option strategy, right? We've got a couple here. We've got some other ones elsewhere. Quick question. Would you get out right now? Actually, no, I'm going to ask the first question. What was our primary exit? What was going to decide when we were going to get out of First Solar? Someone tell me. Someone that's been in the education that listens to me because you also trade some options. You want to find out what's going on, why people are doing things. Let's look at a chart at First Solar really quickly too. We have the right to buy First Solar at 92.50. Would you get out of First Solar right now? Actually, nope, I'm gonna take that back. What was our exit? When were we supposed to exit First Solar? What was the game plan? For a strategy where the government subsidizes solar power. Anyone remember? William, I love it. So William makes the comment, you are playing the run up to and maybe a run after the infrastructure. Correct. In fact, it seems like the infrastructure is just getting signed today. We came up, got passed, got passed, signed into law today. So we basically got as high as 125. You are correct, William. I did not have a dollar figure. I did not have a percentage return. I decided, you know what? I'm going to make my run up to the, uh, the signature of the infrastructure. So right now it's at 112. It has been as high as 123.12. Do I get out? Do I see if it goes back up? What would you guys do looking at this position? What would you do for first solar? And I know some of you, maybe a Jim Bosserman, you don't go and do a lot of trading. Um, William, I know you don't. Bill does, Ida does, Jim does, Dave does, David does. Mary, I'm sure you do. Maude, you have in the past, I'm sure. Russ, I don't know if you do anymore. Tim and oh, we have a different Lance. Don't know if you guys do. So I don't see anyone answering me. It's a tough question, right? So it's interesting. Uh, thank you. So David W. makes a quick comment. Kevin, you could get out and make a 67% return, or you could stay in and possibly make more. Agreed, that's the question. So the question is, do we get out and book a 67% now, or do we stay in it? What would you guys do? Uh, Mod came out with maybe wait till it gets back to overbought, right? So Mod's a, a hey, why don't you wait to see if it gets back to overbought? If you go to the Williams percent R, it looks like people are putting more money into it. So the question is though, is it a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing? Because it seems to be that way right now. The Senate passed it, the House Senate passed it, and then right now uh, just got 
written into law through the White House, I believe, today. So if you were to ask me, um, sure, I'd like to make more, possibly another $9 to the upside from 112 to to 123 actually that's $11 to the upside. I'd love to. But tomorrow if it gets below 11108 I'm going to book a profit. I'm going to book a profit with that simple adage that hey, you know what? You don't go broke by taking a profit. Could it go back up to 123? It might but I'm at a 67% return. And some of the accounts we've done this, where's my favorite? Where's Dollar General at? <laughs> Got a big run on Dollar General. In this particular account, we have not chosen to be in it in stock ownership. It's an expensive position for stock ownership, but we have made a pretty good return you know, it's a couple dollars on a stock that hasn't really moved except for today. Too much bad news for Dollar General. I know it's supposed to get up to like 250, right? Just can't seem to get there. Not necessarily a bad thing, but you're really saying, hey, Dollar General, when are you going to move to like 250 like you were supposed to? You're sitting at 227. You're only up like seven dollars. In fact, if you look at a chart, somewhat interesting for me. Year to date. Well, maybe I don't have the chart that I'm looking for. Maybe Dollar General's chart is not working on E-Trade today. So let's go to Dollar General on stock charts. Well, it has been as high as 238. Boy, it really was supposed to go there. But it started the year roughly at 215, 218. Trading at two twenty-seven, nine dollars a movement. Where you go, Dollar General? So, Kevin, are you going to take a profit? No, we have time to let Dollar General run. Um, <laughs> and the comment was just made. In fact, two comments were made. You guys are really close to each other. Recovery seemed to be a pet. Uh, to be a pattern would agree with your approach on first solar. In fact, in the second comment, you've got to know your stocks because patterns are reoccurring all the time. I agree. It's interesting though, that's kind of a tough pattern. 218 down to 172 to 221 to 194 to 238 to 203. Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me, 227. That's a pretty ugly looking pattern. The neat part is if you collar trade, right? And I think that's where mod's going. If you're collar trading, you're looking to pick up the shares in this time period. You're looking to pick up the shares in this time period. You're looking to pick up shares. So you've got 30% more shares going into the next year. Um, let me go with what we do with Disney right now, right? Because a lot of people have asked about Disney. Not a wonderful chart on Disney. COVID, basically the fact that they're not opening up in California, awful. Uh, I do have a chart on Disney where people think they haven't come up with enough new content to keep people around but disney doesn't have a problem with keeping their clientele around they've got a problem with finding more clientele 
out of 118 million households, right? Uh, we've got our babysitter for 60 bucks on Disney. They're good. They're good. Disney should be trading closer to 210. Actually, I think on Disney, if we gave them a multiple of, of a low end media company, it actually should be trading closer to 300. Ugly looking chart, but right now we've got Disney protected up at what 175, 170, and we have it down at 160. And we made some pretty good downward movement through the April earnings as well. So we have capital on hand to make sure that we definitely are looking to add another 100 shares to people who have Disney. Our target right now is our pivot point sitting right here at, at hopefully, it's below that. It's already below that, sorry. So our pivot point was to add it around 160.80, the S2 pivot point, and it's broken below that. And not only that, we're trading at a yearly low right now. So where are we looking to make a stop? We don't necessarily know. A round number is going to be my best understanding of where we're going to stop. But we might run these puts at 170 all the way down to, boy, all the way down to the actual date of November 26. We could also possibly see Disney if we go down a little bit more. Mod said she has her, so I also have a target at 150 mod, but for all intents and purposes, the 150 is a round number target. And it looks like we're probably looking closer to 153.61, 153.50. It could be filling the gap at 156, but I would be looking closer to 153.50 to 152.32. And maybe if we even went out to two years, boy, you've got a better support level at like 134, 135, 134.88. Kevin, define 134.88. Well, it's the gap and it's the gap. We also have some resistance. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where we take those numbers and decide to book them, but we most definitely would be looking at adding more shares, right? Adding more shares and doing what we can to pick up more shares for a run in Disney sometime in the future. I mean, we only have 17,100 shares in this group. <coughs> we only have three thousand shares in this group. So there's twenty thousand shares, right? Twenty thousand seven hundred. And we only have another 18,100 in this group. <laughs> so, oh, 31720. It's only like we've got 38,000 shares of Disney. So, we're watching it. We're watching, we're paying attention. We're we're basically calling Disney a dog 
through 2021. In fact, it's interesting, what we're looking at and what we're seeing, Disney right now is not a company that we're having a worry about or thinking that, hey, you know what? It's not a great company. It just haven't moved through this year. Been pretty ugly. But when you look at our core holdings, Apple hasn't been much better. 134 to 150. Bank of America looked awesome. Way to go finance, right? Baidu? <laughs> uh, ugly chart. Two out of the three, not looking really good. Ford, core holding on Ford, right? Better, much better. Visa, though, doesn't look all that good. 220 is where it started for crying out loud. 220 is where it started this year at. Trading at 212. Visa's down $8 this year. And Under Armour. Doesn't look much better, right? Not bad. 17.25, I take that. 50%. On the flip side, where's another one of our core holdings? Um, trying to go to our earnings. Um, well, Micron. Another ugly freaking chart. The beauty of what we do, if we can have earnings and go through earnings, all of these drops are more shares so that when things do come back up to those highs, we're going to be in good shape because we've added 10, 20, 30, 40% or more to your positions. Um, it's really going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to look at things because what it really comes down to is this. And it's it's pretty simple. When you talk about pulling your trigger or closing the trade, you don't have to be right, but you should have a repeatable process. And can you justify or stand by your decision, whether you make it, whether it's right or wrong? What makes it easier to do? It never hurts to take a profit. A profit is a benefit. It never hurts to take a profit. Does that mean you could have made more? Of course it does. But if you're growing your money and it's not at risk, let things catch up and you're going to be in great shape. Um, Briefing.com is pissed off at the Fed. We had our first down week. We have inflation. In fact... I found a very interesting article in regards to inflation. The Fed is losing credibility over its inflation narrative, Mohammed El Arian says. So let's face it. Because they still think inflation is transitory when we're no longer energy self-sufficient, when we're having our energy secretary and our uh and our pr gal just say ha huh, we can't control that it's controlled by opec right well we controlled it last year 
And the fact of the matter is the feds are going to have to raise rates sooner than later. Already, and this is my opinion, but already the inflation is becoming, you know, well, let's talk about it. Inflation for gasoline is almost 100%, if not over. I can tell you for milk and eggs, at least in my area, it's more expensive, but really beef, it's ridiculously expensive. Home prices and rents have doubled over the last four years. It's, uh, I don't know what more in regards to inflation the Fed can't understand or see. But the problem is really comes down to this. It's not that there's a problem with raising interest rates because it will level things out and it'll cool off the economy and you won't see the, the spikes anymore. But the problem is because they're so long in getting there, they're going to have to raise rates really quickly. If you haven't financed your house, now is the time to do it. Because the catch up that the Fed is going to have to do, don't be surprised if we do three or four interest rate hikes next year. Also, don't be surprised if, uh, if Powell is nominated and we get something, someone else that is even more liberal in there. But please take a look at inflation. We finally had our first down week in the S&P in the last five or six. We were down a third of a percent last week on the S&P 500. And it was a relatively rough month in regards to inflation. So I just asked a question. Any stock street tips you can suggest a benefit from rising interest rates? Yes, any brokerage houses, any financials, um, any banks, all three of those should do extremely well in a rising interest rate environment. Kevin, why do you say that? Well, if you're a brokerage house, um, you usually have more trading as people are getting fearful of the market and they're backing stuff out. If you are a financial, like a you know, I think a financial is Visa, MasterCard, as things become more expensive, you get to raise your interest rate to charge for people that are borrowing money from you. You could do Discovery, you could even do American Express. If you're a bank, your spreads widen and everything from mortgages to swaps to currency exchanges, and there's all kinds of more money to be had in regards to a rising interest rate environment. So those three have kind of stayed the same. The problem again is inflation is running ridiculously hot. So the question that most people have asked, what will happen to our Christmas rally, right? So let me ask you guys, is there anyone here that thinks you're going to spend less money than last year on Christmas presents? <laughs> Just type a simple, you know, yes or no. Are you going to spend more, less money this year on Christmas presents than you did on last year? <laughs> I saw three no's come in right about the same, right? I also see someone that says the same amount of money. So no one's going to be spending less. We're going to be saying the same. Now understand, Mod, things are more expensive. So if you spend the same amount of money, you might be getting much cheaper gifts than you did last year. And actually, David W. said the same as well. But David, you said a little bit differently. The same, but probably more because things have become more expensive. That's exactly the point. Uh, someone... <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep that answer to myself, Maud. Uh, someone also asked me earlier today, well, could the Christmas rally be in jeopardy? And my comment to them was no. And here's the reason why. Um, you can never underestimate the greed of the American public. In 2008, 
I knew a person that was losing their house and had stopped paying their mortgage, but him and his wife were going to get new iPhones. And at the time, it was like spending $800, and I was doing the math. It's like, wow, you could actually make your mortgage payment, but you're choosing to instead spend that money, put it on credit. You're going to get kicked out of your house in six weeks, but you guys are getting iPhones. I think people have more money this year than they did last year. I think more people at work this year than there were at the beginning of this year as well as last year. I think there's an inventory shortage. So not only will we have a, a Christmas rally, not only will people be buying products off of shelves, they're going to buy everything off the shelf, which may increase the prices a little bit higher as stores are trying to say, hey, we can get more money for it. They're going on like hotcakes. Let's raise the price a couple extra dollars and make a couple extra dollars or a 5 to 10% more on these products by raising the price to try to keep them on the shelves longer. I have already started Christmas shopping. It is ridiculous. I'm, one, I'm a guy, right? I usually don't Christmas shop until the beginning of the year. But I have already started Christmas shopping because I think some of the things that I choose to purchase are going to, to not be on the shelves four to six weeks from now, let alone a week before Christmas. So we'll have our Christmas rally. My interpretation, better than last year because people want to spend money. Apparently people have been trapped. Um, I don't know why people weren't buying more from Amazon last year, but that's what we're running up against. And, and uh, good comment. Uh, Mars made the comment, do you think consumer confidence which took a nosedive, it looked awful, it fell significantly, um, will influence Christmas shopping. And Maud, again, I don't. I think there are a lot of people that have zero confidence, or let's say, what is it, 28% approval rating? So there is, what, 72% of people have zero confidence in um, our administration right now. And I'm generalizing that. But if you don't have confidence in the government and in their ability to run the company, are you going to punish yourself and not do Christmas shopping? <laughs> For me, I'm going to stock up. I'm going to buy more bullets. I'm going to buy a bigger freezer for more beef. And, uh, and I'm going to stock up on some things that I like. <laughs> uh, I might be doing more prepping type Christmas shopping this year than ever before. Um, I, I just don't see the consumer confidence affecting how people spend their money. And again, I think it comes back down to greed. Willing to lose their house and won't pay their mortgage, but they're going to have iPhones. Welcome to the American public. Got to love us. All right, here we go. Um, so really, I think I'm into letting some things run. I think I want to see, uh, I want to see people just making money. <laughs> That's what it really comes down to. Let's go make some money and let's, uh, let's go where we are. Where the market's going to end this week, I'm going to say higher again, but it's going to be a flattish to higher. We are still technically bullish, even though we're starting to get some indicators. If you look down here on the MACD, crossed over, technically it's bearish. 
and it's bearish right here on this line last Thursday. Still technically bullish here, still technically bullish here, still technically bullish on the Williams percent R. Let me raise this chart up so you can see it a little bit better. But right now, we are still bullish on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, those 30 stocks. But a precursor could be down here on the MACD. If we look at the S&P 500, still bullish, but approaching overbought again. We had to go through a couple days before we bounced higher. Wouldn't surprise me if this week, maybe go through a couple days as we get overbought up here and then go higher. But interesting, I think it's interesting, you have the MACD on top of each other. As soon as you have both lines on top of each other, you're looking at no signal. You don't have a signal here. So because of that, Williams percent R, it looks like it's overbought, so I think we're going to be in good shape here. We're going to be okay. Um, let me erase this. And let me go to the NASDAQ. It basically says the same thing. Guys, hold on one second for me. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, NASDAQ, same way. It just took two days to get off of the overbought so we could start moving back up again. Um, same thing. Indecision on the MACD, a little overbought. There is some uncertainty, but we're looking at a Christmas rally, which can move things higher. All right, what else do I have for you guys? Come on. I'm uh, still climbing for 2.5% November. Earnings this week, we have a big one on Wednesday before the market opens. Baidu. We're pretty much set. We're not looking to roll things up. We're pretty much set. We're going to do what we need to do to make sure we can make some money on a stock that most likely can start to make a run. In fact, and when it runs, Baidu can run 50 bucks. There's a lot of upside opportunity in Baidu right now. It's just a matter of the Chinese government getting out of the way. Thursday, Alibaba. And really, this is the first week of the retail. Tuesday, we have Walmart, Home Depot. Wednesday, we have TJ Maxx, Lowe's, Target. Thursday, BJ, JD, Macy's, Ross Stores, uh, W-Day. It's... Work day and Foot Locker on Friday. Economics reports tomorrow is a big one. Retail sales, industrial production, capitalization, those will be big ones. Wednesday, it's the housing market, housing and building permits. Thursday, leading indicators with initial claims. And Friday, monthly options expire. If we look at what we have left here, targets this week, Baidu's this week. Costco's in December and Micron's also in December. I found some interesting articles that are helping me see and understand things. Morgan Stanley says duo betrayed in a move to JP Morgan. So interesting again, here we've got another group of people that had fabulous earnings, a fabulous return to find out that their fund and their stuff that they had was faked. You never back that out, right? It's just, ah, they lied, they faked it. Never backed out of these returns that people supposedly get. I already went over the Fed is losing credibility. Found a very interesting article on pregnancy tests. 
Bank of America says pregnancy tests are going out of the roof. So retailers like Walmart and Target are going to sell more baby stuff. <laughs> this one's kind of a elite for me to see this article. I kind of giggled. I kind of thought it was interesting and funny. But way to go, Bank of America. Barclays downgrades Disney, says streaming growth is slowing. Again, they've got 112 million people paying between 60 to 150 dollars a piece that's just money that goes to them for movies they've already produced they are coming out with some newer type uh some newer type of i don't know star wars and so forth it really hasn't caught on for me but there's no way i'm not renewing my disney subscription i do the disney hulu espn because it entertains my children and for 160 bucks it's well worth it and then Yield Street launches a fund for smaller investors to bet on art. I found it very interesting. This is a great opportunity for a fund that is completely sentimental. But if you ever wanted to invest in art and can't afford a $10 million per piece, Yield Fund has a small investors fund that allows people to do it. And uh, yeah, a little bit on Tesla where Elon Musk is, is mocking Tesla, uh, Tesla's rival Revivian that I also think will just not get to where it needs to be. But if Tesla's not where it needs to be, I'm not sure how uh, someone like Amazon will do it, it's even though Ford is behind it. Ford is taking part in Amazon to get these electric vehicles going. 55,400 pre-orders, but guess what? They have over 100,000 pre-orders for the Ford truck, and they make a crap ton more money on the Ford trucks, the Lightning trucks, than they would right now on the electric vehicles. So, so just putting things out there. With that said, are there any questions you guys have that I can answer for you? Any questions you guys have that I could give an answer to and, and get working on? Um, so interesting question. Kevin, does that mean you're letting more things run through a Christmas rally? And yes, more things run through a Christmas rally mean I'm, I am letting our positions run without uh, protection on it. Apple still has its puts on it right at uh nope we took the puts off today excuse me we took the puts off today on apple uh boeing only a little bit of boeing in this one i've got let me go to my stuff well not that that isn't my stuff but let me go to your stuff that you're used to seeing so for this group of people apple no longer has puts took it off uh, Boeing is running in straight leap calls right now. Bank of America just shares. Baidu is in place with its puts, but we're most likely going to run our put protection at 165, even though it's trading up at 168. It's probably going to trade by 170, so we're going to be $5 out of the money. Uh, CVS shares are just shares. Disney, we do have protection on, but we're looking to take that off around that 153. Ford is just running with shares right now. No protection on Ford. Uh, Bank of America, I think Bank of America, that's a staple. Bank of America is just shares. I made that comment. Only 25,900. Um, Facebook is just shares for those who are in Facebook, letting that run. Under Armour is in just shares, took the protection off of that, letting that run. So we do have some things that we might get a two to three day pullback on that we're just going to let run from there. 
So that's my short answer for that one as of right now. David, does that answer your question? William, does that answer your question? You guys kind of answered the same. Well, yes, basically the same thing there. So yes, running to Christmas rally, I am letting shares run because technically most shares are running bullish. Okay, I don't see any other comments coming in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope this was helpful to see, help you guys see how we're looking at shares and making decisions on what we purchase. And I hope this also helps you understand what your money is doing. Guys, I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. I look forward to talking to you on Thursday and finding a new trade for you. We should have this posted sometime tomorrow morning and um, and I'll see you guys Thursday. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.